Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to start a new series, the Dell PowerEdge R240. In the first video, we're going to focus on CPUs, but stick around because we're going to hit all sorts of things in this uh, series. It's going to be CPUs, memory, hard drives, solid state drives, how to install a Windows Server, uh, how to update your system, plus a ton more. So click that like and smash that subscribe. Let's get going. Well, appreciate you stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R240 server. As I mentioned, this first video is going to be specifically focused on CPU, so we're going to hop in. The R240 is a single socket CPU, so there's only one CPU socket. It's an LGA1151 socket. The chipset on this is a C246 chipset, just in case you're interested. And the different CPUs that you can use uh, is a pretty wide variety. We like to focus on the two Intel Xeon product lines uh, for the R240, which is going to be the E2100 series and the E2200 series. With the E2200, if for some reason you're having any issues of uh, getting it to uh, to boot up or to work, you might want to just make sure that you have an updated BIOS and updated firmware. And if you're not sure how to do that, we actually will um, cover that later on in this series. Uh, so, you know, Stay tuned for that one. Um, as far as some of the um, different options outside of the Xeons, we'll put up a list right now of some of the uh, the Core i3s and Pentiums and Celerons and uh, some of the stuff that you can use if you're you know not interested in the Xeon. But again, what we're stocking and what we're building with uh, are the Intel Xeons. If you have a special request, just email our sales team. All right, so we get asked uh, all the time, hey, uh, what CPUs do you recommend for this within the Intel Xeon product line? And we kind of break it down into uh, three general sections. We have uh, what we like to call our low-end CPUs that are just going to be basically, you know, your budget-friendly, um, you know, pretty much cheaper CPUs. Um, and then we have what we like to call our value CPUs, uh, you know, going to be a little bit better specs, um, but they're going to cost a little bit more, uh, but they're not going to break the bank. So they're, you know, right in that kind of like sweet spot, uh, which is what we build a lot with, to be quite honest. Um, and then we're going to have some high-end ones that are going to be just, you know, uh, top of the line, uh, some of our favorites there. So let's go ahead and hop in, and we'll start with the low-end. So let's start with uh, three low-end ones. That's going to be the E2124, the E2134, and the E2136. That's going to be a 4-core, four 4-core, four and a 6-core, a 3.3, 3.5, and a 3.3 gigahertz. And we'll put all the specs as we go along for all the different ones. So now let's hop into the uh, three values that we like. So first one on the value is going to be the E2174G, E2176G, and E2186G. So all three of those are great values. Uh, it's going to be a 4-core, 6-core, 6-core, 3.8, 3.7, 3.8. 3 so there will be all your specs on those. Uh, and again, I like those because they're going to be, um, you know, two of them at least are going to be 6-cores, um, but they're going to be faster than the, uh, the low-end ones. They are going to cost a little bit more. Um, but they're all great CPUs, and you know this is kind of the sweet spot that we like uh, when we can get them, because I'll be honest, uh, these CPUs as a whole are hard to get right now. Uh, hopefully in the future they'll be a little bit easier for people when they're watching this down the line, but right now they're very difficult to get, uh, but I do love them as a whole. So now let's hop into the three high-end ones we recommend. All right, so now we're going to start with the E2200 series. Uh, that's going to be the E2278G, the e 22 86G and the E2288G. Uh, all these are great procs. It's going to be an 8 core, 6 core, 8 core. It's going to be 3.4, 4.0, and 3.7 as far as the specs. And we'll have it all listed up there for you. Uh, again, these procs as a whole are pretty difficult to get. Um, we are able to, to secure them sometimes in bulk. It just kind of depends on which specific proc. So if you are after some of these servers, definitely give us a ring. And I do hope in the future that the availability uh, does open up, which it should. Uh, but right now, these are uh, great machines, and nobody wants to get rid of them. So um, that being said, let's go ahead and hop in and show you how to actually uh, remove an old CPU and install a new one. Let's say you're going to upgrade it. Uh, we'll just show you some of the proper techniques to go ahead and install the CPU. Let's get going. All right, so laid everything out that you're going to need here to do this upgrade. Uh, so it's pretty simple overall. We're going to need a uh, screwdriver to remove the current he uh, heat sink that's over the CPU. Uh, we're going to need a rag to clean that heat sink and the CPU that we're taking out. Um, and some people don't clean the CPU when you, when you bring it out, and that's fine to each their own. Um, I like to have a clean environment in there. I just don't want any uh, of the old thermal paste flaking off and falling into the uh, CPU socket. So I just try to uh, minimize any potential damage because, again, what I'm in here to do is upgrade the machine and keep it protected, right? Uh, then we are going to need the, uh, the CPU itself. 
itself to uh, replace the current CPU. Um, and then I like to have a tray handy so I can take the old CPU and put it into it. And then we are going to uh, need thermal paste to actually um, put onto the uh, CPU that we're upgrading. So uh, that's pretty much everything that we're going to need for this upgrade. Uh, so let's go ahead and hop in. We're going to move all this to the side. And we're just going to Make sure the latch is set to unlock, pop it open, pretty much like any Dell server you've been in before. Uh, so in our different chassis video that we have coming up, we'll do a, a, a better overview of the whole system and uh, just go over all the different components. But since this is just a CPU video, we're going to you know, stay focused here. Uh, so uh, you're going to have to remove your air baffle. Your air baffle does label everything as far as uh, the, the dim slots, what's uh, A1, A2, A3, A4, which we'll talk about more in the, uh, the memory video. Uh, and it will uh, label the CPU, which is, since there's only one, that's a pretty easy label. And it does actually label the fans as well, which is nice. So, all right, uh, where the blue spots are is where I like to grab. Just lift it, pull it straight up. So now we're going to remove the heat sink. So we're going to grab our Phillips head screwdriver. So I like to use um, just the regular normal screwdriver as opposed to, uh, let's say, an electric screwdriver. I just feel like I have a, a better judge of... Uh, how the heat sink is connected to the motherboard and you can just really feel the screws coming up uh, but again to each their own that's just how I like to do it uh, and you'll notice I did a crisscross pattern um, again that's just how I like to do it um, as opposed to doing just one side um, I like to just go back and forth all right so now we're on to our last one and I can feel I mean the heat sink is there it is it's off um, so now we're just going to go ahead and lift it up so one of the things I'd like to say um, you know since I don't know who installed this um, you know like with Tony Dell, obviously, but when I lift this up, I don't know how much thermal paste is going to be under there. So I like to kind of just flip it over right away just in case uh, there's a bunch of stuff hanging there. You just don't want it falling all over the place. And hopefully there's not a bunch in there and hopefully we don't have to worry about it, but that's what I'm going to do to start. So we're just going to lift this straight up and flip it over and not, not too bad. Um, you can see this is older and it's definitely caked on there. So this is the kind of thing that uh, can definitely flake off and, and get all over everything. Uh, so I'm going to actually clean this off screen uh, just to not accidentally have anything get into the to the motherboard itself uh, so we're just going to go ahead and get this nice and clean over here and normally I actually like to use some spray as well but you can see it's better already uh, so we'll put this to the side uh, now we're going to go ahead and clean our CPU so I'm going to get a nice clean in of this and just simply wipe it down and again this is older so I just don't want it flaking all over the place All right, so after I wiped it, um, for the most part, we got everything. But before I pull the CPU out, there, there's a couple of minor flakes. Um, nothing bad, but I'm just going to go ahead and get uh, some air spray and just go ahead and give it some nice blowout. Okay, and there was a little bit that came out, and I saw it come out and go over there. So we're good. I just wanted to keep, again, everything nice and clean. So now let's go ahead and show you how to actually remove the old CPU and how to install the new one, okay? So uh, simple. Right here, you just have this latch. You're going to push it down and push it over. So it's going to go down and over. And then when this comes up, it's going to actually release this bracket right here that's covering the CPU. So you can push it down. It'll actually come over like that. And now you have complete access to pull the CPU out. So I personally like to grab it right here. There's just a little bit more space. Um, you can technically grab it right here. Um, but with ESD gloves, it does make it a little bit tougher sometimes. Sometimes I'll actually, for this part, might even take my glove off depending on how small the CPU is. But I'm just going to grab it and then I'm going to lift it straight up. One thing I do like to note, uh, be careful that you don't accidentally drag the corner down. Um, this is where sometimes someone just grabs it and kind of lifts it up and then pulls it. And when they do, you can just wipe out a bunch of pins. So just grab it and come straight up. Um, it's very simple, but I do kind of stress that point because you just don't want to damage the machine. That's the whole point here is we're trying to upgrade it. Um, so you'll notice uh, there's your um, 1,151 pins uh, that are in there. Uh, and again, you just want to keep them nice and safe. So now we're going to go ahead and drop in the new CPU. So this is going to actually be an uh, Xeon uh, E2200 series. So you'll notice on the CPU right here, and we will uh, we'll scroll in, there is a gold triangle on the corner. You're going to match that up with these two white triangles on the motherboard that's letting you know that the, this corner matches up here, and that's how you're going to want to insert it, okay? So that's how you know to line everything up. So we're just going to go ahead and drop this right in. And drop's probably not the right word, but we're going to gently set it in. Um, so we've lined everything up. Again, I'd talk about it's coming straight down. Be nice and careful. Uh, now we're going to go ahead and close this up and put our thermal paste on. So for the thermal paste, 
you don't want to put too much on, but you need to put enough on. Um, so what I like to do uh, is I just put on a nice little dollop right in the middle. Nothing too much, but about that much. Um, and then what we will do, I like to also keep it clean because you see sometimes there's a little off of it. So I'll just wipe it on the rag before I put uh, put this back on. Uh, but what I like to do is just about that much. And then when we put the heat sink on, uh, it's going to smush down and spread out nice and evenly, but not too much where it's getting all over the place. Again, because you just don't want it to get into those... Um, uh, to those pins and it's all about safety here. So, all right, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put our heat sink back on. So again, I like to do the uh, crisscross pattern. So I'm just gonna push this down, make sure that we can get the uh, the screw. Sometimes you gotta push kind of hard, to be honest, to get it to start going. But once you get it, you'll feel it now it's locked in. So I'm gonna come over to this side. And again, I'm gonna kind of push down, get the screw to lock into place. And then again, you can feel it once it locks all the way. One of the reasons, again, I like to use just a regular screwdriver so I can really have a good feel for it. Because sometimes you're sitting here, you know, spinning and spinning and it's not even working. It's not connected. So sometimes you do have to push the heat sink down. And that is fine. So all right, now we got all four locked in. And again, it, it wasn't a tough upgrade. Um, I do stress the point of when you're uh, taking the CPU out just to be careful to protect the pins and be careful not to get thermal grease everywhere. But again, it's a, it's a really simple upgrade as a whole. But I hope this was a good refresher for you. If you're looking to, uh, to buy any CPU upgrades or any custom-built servers, Dell, HPE, Supermicro, IBM, Cisco, we'd love the opportunity to earn your data center or your home labs business. Please email us at sales at cloudengine.com. That's sales at cloudengine.com. And thanks for stopping by. Take care, guys.